The purpose of this video is to show you how to adjust bright field images acquired with velocity on the BX61, also known as Neville, or the IX81, also known as Luna. And the particular procedure that we're going to use to adjust those bright field images is also known as flat fielding. So let me just briefly explain what problem you're trying to solve with the adjustments that we're going to make. So there are two problems that you're going to try and compensate with this adjustment. The first problem is that even in the best microscope, the illumination on a bright field image will always be uneven. So on the left um, here, you see an image taken with a 10x objective of a part of the brain called the hippocampus. And you can see that while the center of this image looks quite bright, the edges look much dimmer. In fact, if you remove this sample from the microscope and you take an image without a sample, you'll see the following. So you can see that this is um, clearly an issue with the microscope. It has nothing to do with the sample. The second problem is that sometimes there are imperfections in the light path. So for example, if you look at this image closely, you see what looks like debris here, here, and here. And so some of these things might be debris from the sample itself. So if we go to a different region, they shouldn't be there. So here's a different region of the same sample. And yet you can still see some of the imperfections there. You can see in particular this blob here is present on both. And if you look more closely, and, and this, the video might not have the resolution for you to see this, some of the other imperfections in this area also seem to be strikingly similar between these two images taken in different locations, suggesting that they have nothing to do with the sample and they're a feature of the microscope, a non-desirable feature of the microscope. So in fact, if we take an image without any sample, now we see that indeed that blob on sort of near the left-hand side had nothing to do with the sample. It's something in intrinsic to the microscope, as is a lot of the stuff here. And you can also see that the center of this image is significantly brighter than the edges. Not as much as the other image, because the other image was um, taken on a different microscope where if you take it with the conditions that that image was taken with, that problem is particularly severe. Okay, so those are the problems that you're trying to solve. What do you need before starting the process of solving those problems? So you need proper data. So the data that you will have must have been exported from Velocity in the TIFF format, converted to RGB, and must not have scale bars. You should not export it in, in any other way um, if you want to execute this procedure properly. Okay, So it has to have been exported as a TIFF, not an OME TIFF, not a JPEG. It must have had the option to convert to RGB clicked, and it must have had the option um, to add a scale bar unclicked. OK, what else? You have to have acquired a blank image with exactly the same settings that you used for your other images, but without a sample. And that blank image has to have been acquired in a way that it was not saturated, meaning that the pixel values were not at the maximum possible levels. If you have a blank image but it was saturated, the process I'm going to outline is not going to work. You should have your images grouped in folders according to their settings. So you may have acquired images with more than one objective. If that is the case, for example, you should have all your images taken with one objective, let's say the 20x, in one folder, and all your images taken with another objective, say the 40x, in another folder. One thing worth, worth mentioning here is that you should have a blank image for every group of settings that you use. So if you acquired images at 20x, there should be a 20x blank image acquired with the same settings as all the images you acquired with 20x. And if you have a set of images you acquired with 40x, those need their own blank acquired with the same settings as all the 40x images. Finally, as far as data goes, you will need to have the folders with the images only with images. So there should not be anything else in those folders. There should be no subfolders, and there should be no other files that aren't images. As far as software goes, you should have uh, downloaded and installed Fiji and downloaded and installed the MSL macros. 
So I will add links in the um, sort of subtitle section of this video um, for where you can download and install Fiji and where you can download and install the MSL macros that you will need to do this. In addition, I will add um, instructions that are a written version of this video, which are available on our website. All right, so now that we know what we need, uh, let's work through an example together. So uh, the folder we're looking at right now has four images acquired with the 10x objective on the BX61 microscope. And it has an additional image called flat 10x, which is a blank image. So it's an image that was acquired with exactly the same settings, but with no sample in place. And this was carefully done so that the, this, this image without the sample was not saturated, meaning it wasn't too bright. So let's uh, look at how uh, we can use the macros um, provided by the MSL to improve these images. So first we need to open Fiji. Okay, so once Fiji is open, we can process these images by using a plugin that is in the plugin menu of Fiji, and I've placed it in a submenu called MSL. If we go here, we'll find a plugin called Flat BF BX61. Um, there's also a version for the IX81. You should just use whichever version uh, corresponds to the microscope on which you acquired the images. So because these images were acquired on the BX61, that is the one that we're going to use. So when I click on that, it asks me whether uh, which objective we used. And so for these particular images, uh, it was the 10x, but you can see here all the other options. And it also reminds us that we must have taken a blank image, that none of the images, including the blank, should have saturated pixels. All files, including the blank, should have been acquired with the same settings. And the input directory should only contain the images that need to be flat fielded and nothing else. So there should be no other subfolders, no text files, nothing um, that you don't want to run through this um, flat fielding algorithm. So let's say OK. So to make things a little bit faster, I have copied the location of this folder and I'm going to paste it here so we don't have to go crawling through um, my file space. I'm just going to hit enter. And so now we're in this folder. And so this is the folder that has both the, the, the actual images that I want to adjust and the blank, which is this one. So I'm going to select the blank image and say open. And now it's going to ask me which is the folder that has uh, the files to be flat fields. And it's the same folder where we were before. So I'm going to say select. And what you can see that it will do is it has generated another a subfolder in here that says flat fielded images. And so this contains the results um, of this procedure. So now let's just compare them. So if I grab this file and I drag it here, and then I drag the frat fielded version of it up here. So it's ODG1 Blue Liver 10X8. Okay, so I'm going to drag that here. You can see that whereas in this image, there's a bunch of sort of gunk here, that is gone. So the only imperfections that are left here are ones that were in the sample, not in the light path. Furthermore, you can see that it's a more even image where the corners, which in the original image were darker, are now, um, they now have a brightness more similar to the middle. And it, overall, it just looks better, at least to my eyes, and I hope you will agree. So um, that is what this procedure looks like. There's one more thing um, that you can do if you'd want, which is to add a scale bar to these images. And so the way you do that is as follows. I'm going to close the image that was not flat fielded, and I'm going to concentrate on this one. There is a command in Fiji that allows you to add a scale bar. There's two ways that I know of to get a, to that command uh, that I want to show you right now. One is if you go to Analyze, Tools, Scale Bar, you have this toolbar that allows you to set the, the scale bar to whatever size you want, for example, 200 microns, to whatever color you want, to whatever thickness you want, to whatever font size you want. You can even hide the text if you so wish. That depends a little bit on which journal you're going to send it to or where you're going to use the image. And then you can say OK. And so then if you save this image, 
and you can save it in flat field and then I tend to add a SB or something indicating that this image had a scale bar in case I change my mind later. If we now go and double click on that image. Okay, so this is this is good. This is a problem that occasionally occurs depending on where you open the image. You can see that even though this is the scale bar image, it doesn't have a scale bar. However, if I drag this image into Fiji, it does have a scale bar. So what do we do if we get this weird um, weird issue? Well, what we do is we go to the image and we run a command called flatten. Now, when you don't know, when you know the name of the command in Fiji that you want to run, but you don't know where it is, you can search for it by clicking here. And if you write flatten, it'll open this sort of quick search tool, and then you can just run it. What flatten does is it generates a version of this where the scale bar is embedded. So now if I do, if I save this one, and I save it as scale bar version two, if we go back to the folder, you'll see that now if I double click it, it's there. The other thing to keep in mind is that in PowerPoint, sometimes the scale bars appear and sometimes they don't. So for example, let's do the following. Let's just drag this one that supposedly had a scale bar in. Yeah, so sometimes they appear and sometimes they don't. I haven't actually been able to piece together <clears throat> why that occurs sometimes. Um, but if it does, you now know the, the, the solution to this. You can just open the image in Fiji and then flatten it, and then that will sort of burn the scale bar into the image. Okay, I hope that was useful. And um, as usual, just send me an email if you have any questions.